The Neos archetype is a small sub-archetype within heroes, which were historically considered one of the worst hero sub-archetypes, for various reasons. Although, they received a lot of really good support over the years, which made them a lot more usable. And at number 10, we have Neospatian Air Hummingbird. This is a level 3 monster with low stats, which simply has the effect that once per turn you can gain 500 life points for each card in your opponent's hand. So if you use this card going first and your opponent has 5 cards in their starting hand, this one card allows you to gain 2500 life points, which is actually a pretty significant amount. If you're able to protect this thing on the field, you can gain a sizable amount of life points every turn from its effect. Although gaining life points has never really been a meta competitive strategy, so it was more of a neat gimmick than it was a useful effect. Although as far as a neat gimmick goes, this card's life point gain was on the higher end. However, in the competitive Yu-Gi-Oh, it never really saw any play in the TCG, except as a side deck option in Mystic Mind Burn decks. Although it was definitely not a popular side deck edition, it was just used once or twice back in 2020. The card was also played a little bit in rogue decks that made use of a different card on this list, but for the most part, its effects to gain a chunk of life points is not currently super useful, but could be sometime in the future if they were made pure life point gain decks viable. And no, a rogue mages don't count. And at number 9, we have Elemental Hero Neos Kluger. This is a fusion monster currently not available in the TCG, which is the only reason it's so low on this list, as it has the effect that if this card battles an opponent's monster, you get to inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's attack, regardless of the result of that battle. So if you just need to burn your opponent for a chunk of burn damage, you can crash this thing into any of your opponent's monster and guarantee that burn damage unless they can negate its effect or attack. In addition, it has a floating effect, where if this card's destroyed by battle or leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect, you can special summon a Neos Wise Man from your hand or deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. Neos Wise Man is a terrible main deck effect monster, which is only terrible because of its summoning condition. If you're able to cheat this card out of the deck, it's actually not half bad, because it has the effect where it's just passively can't be destroyed by card effects, and if it battles a monster, you get to inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack of the monster battled, and then gain life points equal to the defense of that monster. And again, it inflicts this burn damage no matter the result of the battle. So if your opponent has a strong monster at the side of the field, like Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, you can crash Elemental Hero Neos Kluger into that card in order to deal 3,500 points of burn damage, then float into Neos Wise Man, who can do the same thing. And the biggest problem with Neos Wise Man is that it really should have been a fusion monster, as it requires you to send two specific cards from your side of the field to the graveyard in order to special summon this card from your hand. And you know what? Elemental Hero Neos Kluger has the same fusion materials as Neos Wise Man. Elemental Hero Neos plus Ubel. And since it only has two materials, you can bring it out using materials from your deck thanks to Neos Fusion. Elemental Hero Neos is an excellent example of how to make a bad main deck monster somewhat less bad by giving it an easy to bring out monster which can cheat the card out easier. And at number 8, we have Elemental Hero Air Neos. This is a Neos Fusion monster, part of the original Neos Fusion monsters, which were all pretty bad because you could only go into the original line of Neos Fusions through Contact Fusion, which means you'd have to get Elemental Hero Neos on the field, plus the Neos Spacing monster needed, in which case you return both of those cards back to your deck, and then the Fusion monster that came out would return itself back to the deck as well during the end phase, which was just terrible for establishing a board state and almost none of the original Neos Fusion monsters were worth bringing out for a single turn, except for Elemental Hero Air Neos. This card has the effect that while your life points are lower than your opponents, this card gains attack equal to the difference. Which means, if you're able to get your life points lower than 2500, then this card will be able to one-shot your opponent if it attacks directly. So, there was a very popular deck in the online scene, and in Yu-Gi-Oh! Online before that was shut down, where you would use a whole bunch of cards that allow you to pay life points, and set up a board state where you could attack with Elemental Hero Neos in order to win. So usually they were just stalling out long enough while losing life points in order to set up that big swing with Air Dance, where you would just attack over whatever your opponent's strongest monster was, then finish off your opponent with the other monsters you had on your side of the field. Being able to OTK your opponent with Air Neos itself exclusively was not necessary. Just attacking over one of your opponent's strongest monsters with an 8000 attack plus monster was enough to easily swing them within striking range of all your other monsters to finish the job. In fact, swinging was such a big beat stick was so oppressive in Yu-Gi-Oh! Online and online spaces, despite Elemental Hero Air Neos never seen competitive play in the TCG, it's still the only original Neos fusion monster to not be added to Duel Links because of this. 
They even added in Elemental Hero Grand Neos before Air Neos, to give you some kind of indication of just how strong Air Neos is. Especially with Neos Fusion being in the game. And Elemental Air Neos is definitely one of my favorite Elemental Hero Fusion monsters, as I used to play an Air Neos OTK deck quite a bit back in my channel's early days, when it was only about Yu-Gi-Oh! replays. As I'm sure a lot of new subscribers to this channel don't know, but this channel used to be dedicated to gimmick deck replay videos for five years before I started making edited content. And an Air Neos OTK replay is the second ever video posted to this channel. And at number seven, we have Elemental Hero Neos Alias. This is a Gemini monster, which has the effect of its Gemini summon, where its name is treated as Elemental Hero Neos while it's on the field. So the intended use of this card was obviously that having the name of Elemental Hero Neos was important enough where they had to lock that name changing effect behind a restrictive summoning condition. Because all the old Neos fusion monsters kind of required you to have Elemental Hero Neos on the field, which was quite difficult since it was a level 7 monster. So Neos Alias was supposed to be the easier way to get that name on the field. And funny enough, Elemental Hero Neos Alias was the most played Gemini monster in the game. Technically, the most broken Gemini monster in the game is Gigaplant, because of its potential to FTK your opponent with infinite loops. However, it hasn't seen a fraction of the amount of competitive play as Elemental Hero Neos Alias. And the funny thing about Neos Alias is that it was never actually played to use its effect. The reason Neos Alias saw play was because it was technically a Gemini monster, technically an Elemental Hero monster, technically a light attribute monster, a warrior monster, and because it had high stats at 1900. And because of all these technicalities, you could use Elemental Hero Neos Alias with Miracle Fusion, Gemini Spark, Honest, Reinforcements of the Army, and Elemental Hero the Shiny. It was just the perfect combinations of stats and type associations that just made it a very valuable addition to a Hero Lives decks, Gemini Hero decks, Bubble Beat decks, and Mast Hero decks, even though none of them used it for its actual Gemini effect. I don't think there's ever been an effect monster that was played more than Elemental Hero Neos Alias, where they literally did not care about its effect at all, and just use it because of everything else about the card. If anything, Neos Alias is a good poster boy for how proper support can make an archetype or card work, if Neos Alias saw a whole bunch of competitive play despite not having a good effect. A 1900 attack beat stick, which could be tagged out with Gemini Spark to destroy something, could be comboed with Honest in order to beat over anything, use as a light target to go into Koga, or use in the graveyard as a light target with Miracle Fusion to go into the Shining, was just super valuable in hero decks up to 2016 where it finally stopped seeing competitive play on a wide scale, as hero decks kind of went into a different direction from their old counterparts. Nowadays, competitive hero decks are full of hero monsters that have actual good effects that they want to use, for things other than their types and attributes. And at number 6, we have Neospatian Grand Mole. This card has the effect that at the start of the damage step, if it's battling an opponent's monster, you can return both this card and your opponent's monster to the hand. And for the longest time, this card was the only good Neospatian monster in the game and the entire archetype was thought of as kind of a joke, except for Neospacy and Grand Mole. Even Elemental Hero Neos Alias was kind of thought of as a joke, because it was never used for its effect. And in fact, Grand Mole was so useful that it was just a stable card, and saw play in all kinds of varied decks, and was eventually limited to one copy because it was too powerful. And it stayed limited to one copy for almost its entire history in the game, only coming off the ban list recently, thanks to being power crept by Eater of Millions. And what exactly is so good about being able to bounce one card? Well, the distinction is the fact that it doesn't target. There are a lot of other cards in the game that can bounce or spin pretty easily, like Compulse or even Phoenix Windblast, but those cards require you to target, and most of them require you to set the card for a turn before you can use them. Neo Space and Grand Mall was the only generic bounce card that can fit in any deck which did not target. So if your opponent had some kind of untargetable boss monster on the field, like Obelisk the Tormentor, at the cost of giving up your normal summon, you can go into Neospace and Grand Mole in order to get rid of that card, and then have Grand Mole in your hand safely to be used again on your next turn. And at number 5, we have Rainbow Neos. This is a level 10 fusion monster at 4500 attack with only 2 fusion materials, so it's a target for Neos fusion, and it has 3 really good effects. While this card is on the field, you can choose to send one card you control to the graveyard in order to activate one of its effects, depending on the card you sent to the graveyard. So if you send a monster you control to the graveyard, you can shuffle all of your opponent's monsters back into their deck. If you send a spell or trap card you control to the graveyard, you can shuffle all of your opponent's spell and trap cards, 
Or if you send the top card of your deck to the graveyard, you can reset your opponent's graveyard and shuffle all their cards back into their deck. So being able to spin pretty much anything you want to of your opponents is incredibly powerful because it's one of the strongest forms of removal in the game. And it's very rare that you're able to do this on an AOE scale. Because remember, floating effects don't activate if you return to the deck unless they specifically say so. So it shuts down a lot of cards. And the fact that being able to reset your opponent's graveyard is the easiest of its effects to activate just kind of makes this thing a monster when it comes out. Your opponent's going to want to spend all of the resources in order to stop Rainbow Neos when it hits the field, because they probably don't want to lose whatever it's about to try to return to the deck. Although the biggest problem with the card was always its fusion materials, as it required Emerald to Hero Neos and one of the unplayable Rainbow Dragon monsters as its materials. So it was always too hard to actually bring out normally, until they added Neos Fusion to the game, which made bringing it out incredibly easy. And it's thanks to Neos Fusion that Rainbow Dragon finally started seeing competitive play as mostly an option in competitive Crystal Beast decks and Ultra Geist decks, funny enough. And at number 4, we have Elemental Hero Honest Neos. This is a card which was obviously modeled after Honest, which actually saw a lot of play in Hero decks, as I described in the Neos Alias section, where Elemental Hero Honest Neos has the effect that if this card is in your hand, you can discard it in order to increase the attack of one hero monster you control by 2500 until the end of the turn. And it also has a quick effect on the field where you can discard a hero monster from your hand in order to give this monster its attack until the end of the turn. And both of its effects are a hard once per turn. And since this card is modeled after Emerald Hero Neos in addition to Honest, instead of giving it Honest's effect where it just gains attack equal to the attack of the monster it's battling, they set it to just a value of 2500. Which makes it an absolute staple card in hero decks because it enjoys having Elemento Hero in its name. So it's able to be searched out and used alongside all the other hero cards. And since it's a light attribute, hero monster, which is above level 5, it combos very well with all the fusions that heroes can bring out. Elemental Hero Honest Neos is played in modern hero decks for kind of the same reason that Elemental Hero Neos Alias used to be played. Because all of its stats and typings are just incredibly useful, but also its hand effect is just incredibly useful on its own too. And at number 3, we have Neo Spacian Aqua Dolphin. This is a low-statted level 3 monster, like most of the Neospatians, that has the effect where you can discard one card to look at one card in your opponent's hand, then choose one monster, and if that monster has less attack than a monster you control, you can destroy that card and inflict 500 points of damage to your opponent. But, if it has a higher attack than a monster you control, then the card is not destroyed, and you take 500 points of damage instead. So it had the potential to rip cards from your opponent's hand at the cost of a discard and only a chance to maybe get rid of one card from your opponent's hand, since Aqua Dolphin itself only has 600 attack. So if you just brought out a lone Aqua Dolphin and tried to use its effect, you'd only be able to destroy a low statted monster with less than 600 attack in their hand. So it was absolutely garbage when it first came out, and fit in with all the other really bad Neospatian monsters. Then, three things happened. Over the course of the game, after the year 2006 when Neospatian Aqua Dolphin was released, all the way up until 2018, Hand trap monsters with less than 600 attack became crucial to competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! To the point where almost everyone was playing them, and being able to get rid of them from your opponent's hand is a huge plus to do in your plays. Also, Neo Spacing Aqua Dolphin was a warrior attribute. There was some really good warrior monster support released, including an entire meta archetype full of warrior monsters. And lastly, Neo Spacing Connector was released, which allows you to special summon Neo Spacing Aqua Dolphin directly from your deck. So, with the perfect storm of these three things happening, Neo Spacing Aqua Dolphin shot up to nearly broken levels of play. As in Goki decks or Dark Warrior combos, they were able to use Neo Spacing Connector in order to special summon Neo Spacing Aqua Dolphin from the deck. Then, use Aqua Dolphin to rip one of your opponent's hand traps out of their hand, while also gaining information on their hand so they could play around the other hand traps. Then, do the rest of their plays like normal, since Neo Space and Connector didn't restrict your summons or anything else for the strong effect of bringing a monster out of your deck. So you just had two warrior monsters in the field after using Aqua Dolphin's effect, in order to go into something like Isolde Two Tales of Double Knights. And it was such a good opening play to just warrior decks in general, that Neo Space and Aqua Dolphin shot up the ranks to being one of the most useful Neo Spacian monsters in the game. The Neo Spacian archetype is kind of full of cards, which really bring home the point of how proper support can make or break an archetype. Although in the case of Neospace and Aqua Dolphin, it was more of a right place and the right time kind of deal, where its effect was useless when it first came out, became useful in the modern area, and then received support so that it could be actually used to great effect. If it wasn't for Neospace and Connector, 
Aqua Dolphin probably wouldn't see play, even though it does counter hand traps pretty handily. If it wasn't warrior type, it probably wouldn't have seen play even with Neo Space and Connector. But since it had a combination of everything going well for it, it enjoyed heavy competitive success, all the way until 2019 when Goki, Orcist, and Dark Warrior decks were heavily hampered because of the ban list. And at number 2, we have Neos Fusion. This is a fusion spell card for the Neos archetype created to heavily offset the terrible summoning conditions of the original Neos Fusion monsters, where you can special summon a fusion monster from your extra deck that lists Elemental Hero Neos as one of its materials, and has exactly two monsters as its materials, where you can then send the materials for that fusion monster from your hand deck or field to the graveyard in order to special summon that fusion monster, ignoring its summoning conditions. However, you can then no longer special summon monsters for the rest of the turn after you use the effect. Neos Fusion goes on to have an additional effect in the graveyard, where if one of your Neos Fusion monsters would be destroyed, or if they would try to return themselves to the extra deck thanks to their bad payment cost, you can instead banish this card from your graveyard to keep them on the field. So Neos Fusion really fixes the old Neos Fusion monsters very well, but also works even better with some of the newer Neos Fusion monsters, like Elemental Hero Brave Neos, which turns Neos Fusion into a foolish burial for any level 4 or lower effect monster. It's also excellent for just bringing out Rainbow Neos very easily, which is just a beast of a boss monster that can really win you the game on its own if you're able to resolve its effect. And if you do bring out Rainbow Neos, it's going to have extra protection, thanks to Neos Fusion in the graveyard working as a get out of jail free card. Neos Fusion is just an all-in-one super good fusion spell card, probably one of the best fusion spell cards in the game, because not only does it allow you to use materials from your deck, which is the absolute best place to use fusion materials from, it also provides protection for the fusion monster it brings out. The card would probably be overpowered if the Neos archetype just had some Neos fusion monsters with any kind of negate, but currently, with one of the best cards you can bring out being Rainbow Neos, it's only enjoyed a niche amount of competitive success in the TCG, and an overwhelming amount of competitive success in Duel Links, where their best target is just Brave Neos. And at number 1, we have Neo Space Connector. This was a new wave Neospacian support card, which was meant to actually allow you to use Neospacian cards. And because this card was created in order to support a bad archetype, they kind of had to make it a little bit overpowered. So it has the effect on its normal summon, where you can special summon any Neospacian monster from your hand or deck, or Elemental Hero Neos. So this thing lets you bring out a level 7 monster directly from your deck. Although, as I talked about a little bit earlier, the best target was definitely Neospacian Aqua Dolphin. It also has the effect where you can tribute this card in order to special summon a Neospacian monster or Elemental Hero Neos in your graveyard. So Neospace Connector is a one card set up for Neos Fusion monsters of old, as it can bring out either the materials directly from your deck and then tag itself out for either of the materials in your graveyard, all in the same turn. Although since it's a starter monster which can bring out another warrior monster from your deck, which can also get rid of one card in your opponent's hand, it was mainly used in a whole bunch of warrior-centric decks, like Goki, Dark Warrior, and even a non-warrior deck like Orcus, thanks to them immediately being able to go into Isolde 2 Tales of Noble Knights afterwards, which would allow you to go into further card advantage. So, it turns out, if you just want to support an old archetype, just give them a busted card that allows them to special some of the monsters from the deck and graveyard, and make them warrior type, and you're guaranteed that they'll see some competitive play. Alright, and that's the list, an archetype which historically has been considered pretty bad before 2018 when they released a couple of overpowered support cards, like Neo Space Connector and Neo's Fusion. So, if you have any ideas for future videos just like this one, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments. And also, remember to not don't subscribe. 